Let's pay homage to the lineage gurus, homage to the venerable Mang Liao Ming, homage to Master Sakya Zheng Kong, homage to His Holiness the Sixteenth Kamapa, and homage to Master Dukten Torji. Homage to the three jewels of the altar. Homage to the main deity of Homa today. The longevity Tathagata. Usnisha Vijaya. And White Tara. And all the deities. Sumo. Tanjan Kato, Tutan Siddhi, all Dhamma masters, Dhamma educators, Dhamma teachers, Dhamma lecturers, Dhamma assistants, directors of temples and chapters, and all disciples over the internet, and everybody present here, good afternoon, everyone. How are you? How do you do? Aisteru. Aisteru. Sarange. Sarange. Hola, amigo. Hola, amigo. Te quiero mucho. Te quiero mucho. Sugoin. Sugoin. Ichiban. Kimochi. Jumi. Jumi. Yapi. Yapi. Ling ling. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Now I would like to let you know for next Sunday, July 12th, 2020th, 3 p.m. There would be Padma Kumara Koma Fire Offering Ceremony. Padma Kumara. So now I would like to let everyone, no need to let everyone know, because everybody knows Padma Kumara. To Buddha school disciples, we all are Padma Kumaras. <laughs> so we shouldn't uh, put ourselves down. Next week, next Sunday, is Padma Kumaras, and every Tubuddha disciple is a Padma Kumara. So we should not uh, put down ourselves. Now you understand, right? Eh? <laughs> I'm not asking you to become primary supplicant. I'm just telling you, don't put yourself down. That's it. So let everybody know. So the Homa today was extremely supreme. I was thinking, 
in my own eyes other than the longevity Tathagata who descended there were also Ushnisha, Vijaya, Buddha Mother and White Tara and they are considered the three longevity deities and as I said and all the deities who are all the deities because when I lift up my head and look straight I saw innumerable deities uncountable one by one they descended I wanted to count one to forty and I look ahead and forty was not even one hundredth of them. So the Homa today is the most supreme Homa ceremony of all the years before. The whole cosmic space is filled with very dense prachna lights and each deity has prachna light around them. And there are so many deities, so crowded, uh, they all descended. So all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas came without uh, appointments. <laughs> we were just performing the longevity Tathagata Homa ceremony, and yet the whole space was filled by all the deities. They all came. So the Homa ceremony today was first and foremost. It never happened before. I've never seen it like that before. It's the most, most supreme. How come? How come? I don't know. I don't know. Because it's Sitzman's birthday. Extraordinarily special today. So, the Homa ceremony today is truly the most extraordinary, supreme. I've never seen that many deities, really uncountable. To open this Dharma talk, let me share a joke. The teacher asked me, how is your partner? And my answer, my, oh, it's play of word of Chinese. So partner <laughs> sounds like to the elephant and to the pig, to the dog. Yeah, it's just play of word. <laughs> That's the end of the joke. That's amazing. The question and the answer. You're two brothers, two buddies. And he said, Big bro, 
I always have this question, can you help me? And the big bro replied, what's going on? And the guy said, lobster in Chinese is like dragon shrimp. Is it a shrimp? It's also play of word in Chinese. And the big bro replied, If it's not a shrimp, then is it a dragon? Because lobster in Chinese is called dragon shrimp. So lobster is a shrimp, and the shrimp is shrimp, because it's not the dragon. That's kind of fun. The girlfriend asked, Honey, oh my tummy is getting bigger and bigger. Am I pregnant? And the boyfriend replied, I know. Who's the dad of the baby? And she asked, who? It's McDonald, Kentucky, Domino, Pizza, Napoli, and Elmo, Chicken, and Uslan. And the bubble tea, and the girlfriend didn't say anything. So what I'm trying to say is that there's cause and effect in everything. Don't think that you get fat because of the air that just by drinking water, you get fat. If you're fat, there must be reasons to it. It is all cause and effect. Now, let's do the question and answer. The first question, Grand Master, peace. I have always been practicing the four preliminary practices, the Root Guru Yoga and Smoke Offering. Not long ago, I got really sick, and after I recovered, I still had asthma, and my brain felt blank. So, after taking a two-month break, I am now starting again. However, I feel some heat that rises to the brow point. This parched heat then descends. I'm not sure what this is about. Have I breached the precept? Could you please explain? Thank you. There he is practicing four preliminary practices with Guru Yoga and smoke offering. And then, not long ago, he got sick and he recovered. But he had asthma, and the brain felt blank, so he took a break for two months. The question is, did he breach the precept? I think. Being sick and asthma.
。我觉得你这个问题也令我这个头脑全部空白。Your question make my brain fill blank. <笑>为什么呢？我实在不知道怎么回答你。I don't know what to say. I know how to answer. Uh, maybe you don't reach the precept. If you're tired, there's no need to force yourself. Of course, when you're sick, you cannot do your dharma practice. When you're tired, you should sleep. You should rest. No need to practice. You don't necessarily have to practice. If it's because you're sick, and then you don't practice, that's not necessarily violating the precept. And in the spiritual. Experience felt some heat that rises to the brow point, and the parched heat then descends. In the spiritual heat, the heat can go to the brow point and then descends. But he, you mentioned it's the parched heat. So, what Kundalini or inner fire is warm, but it's not the kind of heat that makes you feel anxious or uncomfortable. So that kind of fire is called the. Uh, impure fire. It's like a, a mix, an unclear fire, and you have to change the impure fire to become pure fire or clean fire. And what is clean or pure? We often say about. Pure body, pure speech, and pure mind. Now you can train yourself to become pure body. When the body does not move, that the body is pure. Like when we sit in the Vajra position, which means a double cross legs, and the hands, place the two hands at the navel, below the navel, and form the meditation mu mudra. And the spine is upright. You have to sit very upright. And two shoulders are also upright, open. And slightly tuck in the chin to press on the Adam's apple. The tip of the tongue touches the upper palate. The two legs are crossed. The hands for meditation mudra. The spine is straight and upright. The shoulders also open. And tuck in the chin. The tip of the tongue touches the upper palate. And the body is not moving. That's the pure body.
of body purity. And it's also called the seven postures of Vairokana. Vairokana seven postures. And what is the pure speech or speech purity? Is when you don't speak, when the mouth does not move, you don't talk, you don't leak any qi. When you don't talk, then your mouth is not leaking or has no faults. At that time, the speech is pure. And what is a pure mind or mind purity? When the mind is pure, you don't think about the past and also not about the future. You don't think about the future. And you also don't think about the present. No past, no present, no future. Your mind stays at the no thought state. So you have no thoughts whatsoever. You don't think about what you want to obtain or what you want to attain. This way, it will be the pure body and mind. And at that time, the inner fire that's generated will also be pure. So what is the pure body? Is the Vairokana seven posture. What is the pure speech when you don't talk and you don't chant mantra, you don't chant the Buddha's name, and you don't talk nonsense? That's the pure speech. And what is pure mind? You don't think about things of the past and you don't think about your hopes for the future. And you don't even think about what what you're doing now or what you want to attain. What at that moment, that would be the true, pure mind. If you often do that and you have spiritual experiences, like the heat that rises to the brow point and then descends, the heat would be a cool, warm. And the inner fire that's generated would be a pure inner fire. That was the answer to the first question. In the past, Ananda failed to beseech Sakyamuni Buddha to stay in samsara and not to enter Parinirvana. This is the greatest regret of Buddhist followers. Now, as a true Buddha disciple, what should we do every day how to practice so that we can gather the power of all disciples to eliminate the hindrances to Grandmaster's longevity. Yes, there are many disciples now that for every ceremony they pray Grandmaster to be healthy and live a long life. And today in performing the longevity Buddha Homa is also to help Grandmaster. 
how to practice and to apply so we can gather the power of all disciples to eliminate the hindrances of Grandmaster's longevity. She's very caring to Grandmaster. Longevity and health are extremely important. Ah, they want Grandmaster to be seated here to give Dharma teaching. Every time you do your Dharma practice, you can perform a merit dedication. You can add to your merit dedication. Many, many people, if many, many people do the same merit dedication, it would generate great power. That's why I said that group practice is very important. The power of a group practice would be much greater than the individual practice. Because everybody lives at different places, so if you can add to your merit dedication, you dedicate the merit to Grandmaster so that Grandmaster can have good health and live a long life. And to be in samsara for a bit longer, that's good enough. And the key point is in your real practice. If you have done the real practice and you do the merit dedication, then that you would generate the individual power. And if everybody does the same thing, then it would collect all, all, of, all of it then to become a great power. I remember Maudya Kalana went to hell to save his mother because his mother was in the hungry ghost world. Now, Diaglalana, because his mother was in the hungry, hungry ghost realm, he, she could not eat. Whatever she tries to eat would become fire. And Maudya Galana went to hell and saw his mother suffering, and he tried to feed her with food. But every time the food touches her mouth, it becomes a burning ash. So although he had great transcendent power, he could not do anything and had to return to samsara and told Sakyamuni Buddha. So Sakyamuni Buddha told him that all you could do is to gather the power of all the Sangha to Bardo deliver your mother so that uh, she can be delivered from the hungry ghost realm. Your own individual power will not be enough. Although you have great transcendent power, but your individual power will not be enough to bar to deliver your mother. You have to gather the power of all people. in order to bar to deliver your mother. So it became that uh, a universal deliverance of the mid-year, mid-year. So you gather the power of all the ordained Sangha member to perform bar to deliverance. So that means that an individual's power
power is not enough. You have to gather the power of everybody. So, the, in order to eliminate the hindrances of Grandmaster's longevity. So that was the answer. Next question. I've had this question for a long time. Is there a difference between praying for Grandmaster's blessings when we practice at our altar at home and asking for blessings personally from Grandmaster in Seattle? Because I have had this persistent problem, and when I went to Seattle and received blessing from Grandmaster, I was able to maintain my pure thought for longer, about one to two months. However, when I do my daily practice at home, I always feel it's quite topsy-turvy, and it is very difficult to settle my thoughts to keep the pure thought. Why is this? Is it because my karma is too heavy, or lack of pure faith, or my inability? And how should I correct the situation? Although I know that the set of practice should include the beginning part, main part, and the ending part of the practice, but if I don't have much time that day, or is it too late? Can I just practice the main part? Or is it better not to practice at all? Because if I force myself to practice the whole set, I would just falling, end up falling asleep from beginning to end. I also heard someone said that far away water cannot help with the fire at hand, but Grandmaster's Dharma body fills the whole cosmic space. Will there be such a problem then? Thank you for your teaching. If she comes personally to get blessings, she could maintain it for one to two months. If just doing the daily practice at home is all quite messy and disorderly. Of course, receiving personal, receiving blessing personally has greater power you come to Seattle and ask for blessing, that would be greater power. So if you are able to come to Seattle to ask for blessings, that would be the best kind. Otherwise, you concentrate and practice and visualize that Grandmaster sitting on top of your head you will receive the blessings all the same. Let me tell you, many people dream of Grandmaster giving blessings to them in their dreams. You have to learn this. If you live far away, like in Southeast Asia, you cannot come to Seattle every one to two months for blessings, right? But if you concentrate in your prayer, if you're single-minded and pray, it's the same Grandmaster will enter into your dream and bless you and the blessings in the dream and blessings you receive physically is the same, they are the same. That's also very powerful. So Dharma body would be there 
with the split of a second, in a split of a second. Last Friday, the seven days after Master Li was Friday, last Friday. A Friday afternoon, I was uh, painting in the office at the Tribuda Foundation office. There were many disciples that heard me say, yawning with loud sound. Yawning usually produces no sound. You just open your mouth and breathe in. But that day, I was yawning very loudly. The Reverend B.N. was my helper uh, for my painting. How loud was it? Many, many times. It was very loud. And when I yawned, even people at the other office could hear it. There was a strange noise of the yawning. Let me tell you, that was Master Li Xing Zhu that came. <laughs> Just one applause. I asked her, I have Bardu delivered you to the Western Paradise. You have uh, sat on the White Lotus and went to the Western Paradise, why did you come back? And she said, so just with the thought, and she'll be there with the thought, she'll get there. That's a Dharma body. And Master Li Xing Zhu told me, when she was 86, she was extremely weak. It was painful all over her body, in the bones. And she had a pancreatic cancer, extremely painful. She felt discomfort and pain all over the body. And when she left her body, the pain all disappeared. And the spiritual state all came back. All the uh, lucidity and the mental states returned. And she told me that the body is the karma of sentient beings. So when the soul leaves the physical body, you became very lively, and you don't look old, you became young, and you're wearing a crown, and looks very dignified, and the whole body radiates light seated on top of a white lotus. It's really great. Everything is very pure, really marvelous. And inside her heart, she can see her inner self. So, from her mind, she all of a sudden she saw her own true nature. 
So Master Li Xingzhu told me. She saw the her true nature inside her own mind, and she discovered that the physical body was a burden, a true burden to us. So as soon as she left the body, she changed. She became young and youthful, and she radiates light all her, over her body, and she's wearing a crown and seated on a lotus throne. And with the thought, she'll, she'll be there. I asked her, why did you come back? Because it's the seven days after her passing, so she came back. And it's just with one thought, she's there. And she also told me other things. So Dharma bodies are everywhere, omnipresent. If you come personally to Seattle and request for blessings from Grandmaster, of course, that's very realistic. But Grandmaster can also give blessings in the dreams. And on top of that, if you are single-minded and wholehearted in your praying for the blessings and the same grandmaster would bless you and also the same is as powerful. Most people who come to samsara would have heavy karma. If you don't have much time that day or it's already very late, can I just practice the main part? Sure. If you really don't have time. Or is it better not to practice at all? I think it's better if you just do the main part. Visualize, mantra chanting, enter samadhi. And then when you you're really sleepy in your samadhi, then you just get up and go to sleep. <laughs> and then you just go to sleep. I also heard someone said that far away water cannot help with the fire at hand. But the grandmaster's dharma body fills the whole cosmic space. No problem, no such problem. And because of the experience of Master Li Xing Zhu, let me tell you that grandmaster's dharma body is gigantic. It's huge. And omnipresent everywhere. Whenever you are uh, wholehearted in your prayer, then you I will definitely give you blessings. A teacher gave a topic to let the students to fill in. So the teacher would write the beginning part of the sentence and the students have to fill in the last part. Ah, this is all Chinese things. Xiesheng天的是物者七缺成情。七缺成情。老师写的是天若有情天依老。Xiesheng天的人若有情死得早。if the heaven has feelings, then the heaven too becomes old. 
When the human has feelings, you die fast.老师写的是两情若是长久时前道夜底不够了Ask the gentleman how much grief is there to the string up the, the pine of white liquor. Yeah, it's only meaningless. Meaningless. And the teacher fainted. Uh, now, I'd like to explain what accumulation, the four channel precious palaces, etc. All of your qi accumulates at the brow chakra, throat chakra, heart chakra, and navel chakra. They are the four palaces with four kinds of qi. I have mentioned about four kinds of qi, the gentle qi at the brow point, at the brow, and the neutral qi is at the heart, and the heart and strong qi at the navel chakra. And the burning qi not at the throat chakra, or we can also say it at the root throat chakra. It's called the fire accompanying qi, upper qi, lower qi. The neutral qi and the fire accompanying qi. Four kinds of qi. The four kinds of qi that we mentioned yesterday. And B, what accumulation relied upon? That the mind qi, ten dakas and dakinis. The five ambrosia represent the five dakas. And the accompanying five qi represent the five dakinis. So why these two qi and ambrosia are called the accumulation period separately? Because they are the cause. Why are they the cause? Because at the mandarin position, it generates the teeth, claws, etc. of the leaking body. At the path position, it generates meditation. And at the pure fruition position, the area Amrita can generate the rainbow light, marvelous dignity of the non-leaking body. 
他这边呢，有讲到五种气。So it talks about the five different kinds of qi. Also represent the five dakinis. Mind qi, five ambrosia. The five ambrosia represent the five dakas. The five qi. Represent the five dakinis. So why these two are called the accumulation period? Separately, they are the cause. Actually, it's the same. So, sin, mind, chi, and the five ambrosia, they are all the cause for spiritual cultivation. Why are they the cause? Because at the mundane position, our body will uh, generate teeth, claws, etc. At the path position, it becomes meditation. So, body is the cause of spiritual cultivation. At the pure fruition position, when you're already completely pure, then you can generate the rainbow-like, mar marvelous dignity of the non-leaking body. I have explained it. Master Li Xingzhu, the last time I saw her, she was leaning on the roller, she was extremely weak, and her eyesight were very fuzzy and completely silver hair, and her whole body was in pain, joints and bones, and extremely painful. I could not move, extremely tired and miserable and so pain and sick and she also had cancer at 86 but when she left she completely changed she became young and dignified and beautiful and she was wearing a jeweled crown her body emit a bright light and the lotus holds her body. She's very dignified, just like the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. So I have said that our body is a burden, but the body is also the cause for spiritual cultivation. We all know what the five ambrosias are. Most people know. They represent the Buddha fathers or Dakas. And the five Qi inside our body represent the five Dakinis. Represent the Dakinis. So our body too is the cause for spiritual cultivation. And because you cultivate spiritually, what you obtain would be like Master Li Xing Zhu. The whole body would radiate light and the Dharma body is everywhere. So that's the cause. What accumulation relied upon? Why? It has to be the mind qi. The mind qi symbolizes the dakas dakinis. This is a joke. Uh, 
driving around the mountain, the driver drove really fast, and I felt quite nervous. So I tried to speak nicely to him, like, Oh, Mr. Driver, big bro, you, your skill is really good. You drive so fast, even at this uh, roundabout mountain roads. And his answer shocked everybody in the car and froze them because uh, the drivers left driving on these mountain roads have all have good skill, driving skill, because the one with the less good, good skills all died. The teacher asked Xiaoming, so this test, did you copy everybody? Uh, the whole thing, did you copy the whole thing? And Xiaoming replied, not the whole thing. So which one that you did not copy? And Xiaoming replied, yes, my name. Actually, he copied everything else. Um, there's a restaurant that had a parrot right at the door. Whenever there's a customer, he would say, Hello, welcome. And there was a regular customer that thought maybe I would just go in really like sneaked in and I wonder what the parrot would say and one day he did and the parrot instead said oh my god you scared me you shocked me parrots are smart if he ran and sneaked in he did not have time to say that and just said, Oh, you shocked me. So, when we talk about alarm day, actually, we also talk about cause and effect. We have the cause for spiritual cultivation. And you practice and gather all these causes, and in the future, will you have attainments of clear light radiance, and that means you have attained the friction. If you don't have the causes for spiritual cultivation, there's no way that you would attain any friction. This is all cause and effect, right? So just now, we said, why we want to accumulate the mind and the qi in order to cultivate spiritually. The reason, because all of those are the cause of spiritual cultivation. And without these causes, you're always in the rebirth cycle. But once you have and gather the causes for spiritual cultivation, then you would be able to attain fruition. So what we talk about today is you reap what you sow. So, whatever that you want to get, you have to plant it. This is like spoken by Husi. So, when you plant the beans, you get the beans. When you plant the melons, you get the melons. Lamde, path and its fruit, and because of the path, you are able to reap the fruit. So, that's... Now, that's all for today.